At this point in my life, who I hunt with and how I hunt is way more important than what the end result is. Hey guys, if you're not gonna shoot that thing, let's get up to the trailhead here so Matthew has one less excuse about why he's not gonna shoot something. And this hunt here, hunting with my son, my good friend Mike Spitzer, joined in camp by my buddy Scott Jones. This is going to be as much fun as anything I'm gonna do this year. <laughs> That's awesome. The beauty of living in America is that you have all of this public land. We're in Nevada where 80 some percent of the state is public land. You don't need to be wealthy. You don't need to be some nobility. All you need is a tag and you come to Nevada and you set your camp and you just drive and go to the trailhead and you hike and you glass and you chase deer or elk or whatever. You can do that in so many places in the West, but there's no place that exemplifies it more than Nevada because Nevada is such a high percentage of public land. You know, I, I'm pretty spoiled, Scott Jones. You know, I mean, how many people live in a state a thousand miles away and they show up and one of their best friends has already got the deer tied to a tree <laughs> for him, huh? It, 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 to it. I'm Scott Jones from Washoe Valley, Nevada. I met Randy back when he was going to University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, I was out of college already and he was working his way through. Every time Randy's drawn a tag in Nevada, it's been an area that I've never gone to before. So just as I have in the past this time, I came out a few days earlier to try to learn the country a little bit and see if we could uh, spot some good sized deer ahead of time. At least for the first day, I'd rather just go to all these knobs and glass and just get to know how the country lays out. And uh, it's going to be windy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlike most of our hunts, this hunt I blocked out six and a half days of hunting because we had three tags. We had me, we had my son Matthew, and we had my buddy Mike Spitzer. And I knew that regardless of how good the conditions are, filling three tags in our normal five-day window, uh, that's going to be tough. And I'm very happy that, that I blocked out as much time as I did. Because the first day here, it was just me and my buddy Scott Jones. Mike was gonna come in that night. So the very first day, we had winds that were just screaming. It was fogged in, it was raining, mist. It, glassing anything was, well, it was just tough. Welcome to Nevada. There's a big buck right over here. Scott Jones told me so. I don't know how I'm supposed to hunt in this stuff. By the time Mike showed up after the first night of hunting, I was a little bit, uh, I'll say, not disappointed, but worried. Because I had no idea if the, the supposed theory of this unit is the last three days are the best. Don't, don't get worried, the bucks will show up. But all we saw were little forkies and three points, and nothing very wide, and I'm like, oh man. This is going to be tough. When do the bucks start showing up and staging nearby? I guess it's one of the questions. Because there's no way all these does are getting serviced by these little bucks. Oh yeah, there's no way. <laughs> there's, there's, that ain't going to happen. 40 different groups of does I've seen this morning. Yeah. Right off the bat, I was amazed. We saw so many does. We'd see not exaggerating, two to three hundred does a day, easy. And, uh, but there would be really not many bucks. And the bucks that we did see were pretty small, they were younger. Tuesday, Randy had to head out to Salt Lake City to pick up Matthew. So it was just myself and, and Scott on Tuesday driving around. We had fun, we hijacked the show for a little bit, did some Randy impressions. Hey folks. Randy Newberg here. We gotta work on that. <laughs> hey folks, gotta deepen, Randy Newberg. Here. Gotta deepen that voice a little bit. <laughs> hey folks, Randy. <laughs> yeah. 
We had a really good time. Was, we were seeing the rutting behavior probably double what it had been the day before, so it, it was a great day. <laughs> no blood. We left them up on the mountain for you. Oh, okay. After the trip to Salt Lake to pick up Matthew, he and I got to camp about 2.30 in the afternoon, I'd say it would be. Scott and Mike, were, they told us, all right, meet us in this spot and we'll just go from there. So we hardly even get driving in there. And Matthew looks out his window, he says, well, there's a nice buck. That's the nicest buck we've seen. Whatever Matthew says goes. I don't know about those guys, Mike. Matthew said he won't shoot it because we're on our way to a trailhead up here, and the biggest buck we've seen in three days is standing here 100 yards off the road. And Matthew's like, well, I can't just show up from the airport and shoot one 100 yards off the road. We gotta get to the trailhead. Hey guys, if you're not gonna shoot that thing, let's get up to the trailhead here so Matthew has one less excuse about why he's not gonna shoot something. Jeez. I raised a kid better than that. My dad's rolling over in his grave that we didn't shoot one that close to the road. Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg is brought to you by Leupold Optics, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Southeast Montana Tourism, visit Southeast Montana, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, we call the game. Kennetrek Boots for the trail less traveled and by Go Hunt Insider, changing how hunts are found. The four by four. Oh, I'm not chasing after him. You know, what is it gonna take before you'll go after one? You have a tag too, right? So that fourth morning, we wheel in there and the sun's coming out. Beautiful morning, a little bit on the chilly side. And we drive up into this canyon and we all split up. Me and Matthew and Marcus, the camera guy, we go to one direction. Scott and, and Mike go a different direction. And there are deer everywhere. I mean, there are so many deer, it's crazy. And we're seeing a little buck here, a little buck there, a little buck here. And Marcus, the camera guy, he's carrying his binoculars and he's like, I think there's a decent buck up on that ridge up there, but I can't really tell. So I grab the spotting scope and I look at it. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I, I like the looks of that one. And I tell Matthew, what do you think? Matthew takes one look in there and he says, I'll shoot that buck. Are you gonna shoot him when we get there? Mm -hmm. Depends. If not, will you loan me the rifle? <laughs> yeah, because I'm shooting it if you don't. Yeah, that's fine. And so we started chasing it up the hill, trying to find a good vantage point from where we could get a better look at it and maybe get a shot. And as we're moving up the hill, he's moving around, and turns out when we finally had a, a shot at him, it was a little longer than I was comfortable with. Let me get a range, Matthew. That looks pretty far. The guy who said you wanted a close shot. He's at 380 right now. I think it's just too far. Huh? I'm just not comfortable taking that right now. It's too far. Too far? Then don't, don't shoot then. Matthew just said, you know what? That's, that's further than what I want to shoot. And I respect that. That's, you know, that's what we hope people will do. But we saw the buck go up on this little bench and we can see all directions above him, to the side of him, below him. And that bench isn't more than 200 yards wide. And I'm like, all right, he's gotta be up there. So we make this plan. We're gonna sneak around these aspens and get to his elevation and we're gonna side hill. And actually when we get up there, there's a, a trail that takes us up above that bench where we can look right down in there. And we're looking and looking. Okay, there's doe here, a couple does there. Where did he go? He's gotta be right here somewhere. Well, just about the time we start letting our guard down and we're like, well, maybe he got out of here. There he is, right here. Wah, wah, wah. 
Yeah. Right back. Woo. No, he's not stopping. Nothing you can do about it at that point. He knew we were there, but the good part was he goes down off this little bench and we can see him going down the hill and he disappears in this big brushy patch down in the bottom. It's like, well, he hasn't come out of there. We'd see him. It's open on all sides. He pulled the old whitetail trick. I'm gonna go in the deep brush and just hang out for a while. The old whitetail hunter and me just can't resist a chance to go do a drive. I'm gonna have Matthew and the camera go down here on the left side of this big ocean of service berry. And since the wind is coming across this way, I'm gonna go over on that side and let my wind just filter down in there. And uh, I'm just gonna, I gotta put my beanie on though. You, you can't do a white-tailed deer drive without an orange hat. So I'm borrowing Matthew's hat. This is, this is like Minnesota. Minnesota guys wear orange from here. I think they even paint the soles of their boot orange. That's what I grew up with, so. I think Matthew and Marcus thought I was losing my mind, which there might be some validity to that claim, but they agreed. All right, let's do it. got a nice little rock here and there isn't quite as much elevation as we'd hoped in this little area. So my goal is to at least be able to see everything, even if that doesn't give it an immediate shot. And then if we see something come out, we'll just hustle a little bit so we can get a clearer shot. But this is, I think, the best that we're going to get. We can see pretty much everything up there, a fair amount down here. We do have a little blind spot down that way, but we can't we can't really do much about that. So I think this is just where we're gonna set up and hope he comes by. Matthew and Marcus get set up on this little knob and quick as I see him in position, I start working my way through there. I step out onto this little, just like a, a little point that is maybe 10 yards long where I could look down in the brush. And I look across and there's the buck standing there just raking on this tree. And right behind him, I can see Matthew and Marcus set up. I'm like, why aren't they shooting this thing? My dad could see him when he was across the way and was waving frantically at us like, hey, he's, he's right there. How can you not see him? And so I, I took the hint and moved up a little bit so that I could hopefully see him or get a better shot. And in the process of doing that, I guess I spooked him a little bit and he ran off. But when he ran off, he ran to a spot where I did have a good shot. Rip over up out. Right above the Oh, yep, yep, I see him. Scott and I stayed down low and it was so fun to watch through the spotter. The buck moved from where Randy was seeing it at and we could see right where he came out on this point. It looked like a good shot for Matthew and uh, Sure enough, it didn't take long before Matthew found him. All right, ready. It's down. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear this on the camera, but you can hear them <laughs> screaming down there. One shot and dropped him like a rock. We were just elated because we thought, oh no, this isn't going to happen. So uh, Mike and I were both giving off war hoops. It's just, <laughs> can you hear them down there just going crazy? So we're going to go. <laughs> I really hope you can hear that. <laughs> You made a dandy shot, Matthew. Great job, congratulations. Thanks. I think they call that a how I handshake. We were excited for Matthew to shoot that buck. He was beautiful. Really happy for Matthew to, to get the buck that he chose, that he wanted to hunt. I was so happy for Matthew because it's it's rare opportunity that he gets to come back out west and do this stuff. And it was just, it was, it was as good of a morning of hunting as I've ever had. 
and I didn't even put a rifle to my shoulder that morning. Everything that I wanted out of this hunt, I really got. And then I got to spend the next few days just tagging along with my dad and Mike to uh, watch them get their bucks. So that evening, Scott and Mike were, they went up to this glassing point that we, we, we focused a lot on that glassing point because you can see every direction, north, south, east, and west. We start driving up there, and it's taking us forever. There are just so many deer, and we're glassing and glassing, and finally it opens up a little bit more, and I, I stopped just before this cattle guard, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna look around here a little bit, just because there's a big, wide open hillside with a bunch of scattered mahoganies, and I get to looking, and I'm like, wow, that body is big compared to every other body. And right now I am looking at just an ugly, nasty, gnarly three by three. I mean, wide, tall, and heavy. I know people get worked up about score. I don't. I get worked up about big, ugly, nasty three by threes. There's three days left in the hunt, but the minute I put the spotter on this thing, I said, I'm shooting it. I don't know if we can get close enough, but we're gonna try. Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg is brought to you by Howa, precision rifles and barreled actions, Nosler, when your tag is drawn, make it count. Load Nosler up front. Sitka, specialized outdoor wear and equipment. Bowtech, refuse to follow. Arizona Game and Fish. And by Hunt by Onyx Maps, land ownership hunting maps. I told everybody I wanted something big, ugly, and trashy. I don't care about scores, I don't care about anything else, and I found it. This thing, he is just tearing up every tree he can see, every brush. He's just all swelled up, all puffed up. I'm like, man, that would be fun to shoot that buck. Anything better right around the right than just standing up and looking right over the top. But I'm thinking that he has that rock. And we're just going and going and going and we get up there and we're catching little glimpses of him because the, the slope is so steep from our angle. He's darting back and forth, kind of rounding up these does, doing his thing. And finally we come to where this rock wall comes down and we got to make a decision. Do we go left or do we go right? Well, they'd been hanging out on the left side. So I start easing around the left side of that wall and I see a doe go through a, a little crack in that wall, a little low spot. And then the buck follows her. And Mike's like, I think they're going around the other side. I thought I need to go and get an eye on this buck if he went around the ridge and he's heading out this way. So I kind of left Randy and went around the ridge. And as I look up, I, I couldn't see the buck, but I did see a doe come out. And she saw me and she squirted back through, went back to the other side. I no more than asked, where's Mike? And here comes that doe running back out of that little low spot in the wall. And here comes the buck right behind her. I'm like, Holy cow, how lucky is this? I'm huffing and puffing so hard that I can't keep anything steady. I'm like, this is not good. Take a few deep breaths, try to get my breathing better. And Marcus tells me, I'm on him when you're ready. I'm on him. I'm on him. I'm on him. What happened? I think he dropped.
He just dropped in his tracks. That, even though it was only 180 yards, sitting down, trying to get underneath your pack like that. I got scope, but I don't think it cut me. Thank goodness for this rubber edge on this loophole. We just start walking up there. It's like, all right, let's get up there because we got like 20 minutes left of shooting light. Maybe 15 minutes, I don't know. If we got to finish him off, we got to get up there. Well, we go up there and uh, he's just laying there dead as disco. Well, like I said, on this hunt, I wanted something either really, really big score-wise or something ugly. And I think this is the ugliest deer I've seen in a long time. I mean, he's uglier than mud fence. I think he rolled down the ugly slope and he hit every rock, ugly rock on the way down. Oh man, what a cool looking buck. Oh. Huh? Look at that. Big old gnarly, skanky. Well, this is what I came for. I couldn't be happier. Matthew shot a beautiful wells, I mean just perfectly proportioned buck. I shot this big, gnarly, nasty thing. And now we got one tag left, Mike. I hope you get what you want out of this hunt because Matthew and I have been blessed. Look at that, he has got He's got to be an old boy with all these knobs and that big bladed eye guard. Huh? He's cool. When the hunt started, we were all talking about like, what would we want to shoot? And Matthew's like, I don't really care what I shoot. I just want to make a good shot and get close. I'm like, I want something ugly and trashy. And Mike's like, mm, I don't know. I'll know what I want when I see it. Well, that kind of applied to me too. I knew what I wanted when I saw it and I wanted that buck. Thank you, buck. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It was such a great experience to have my son right there watching, have my friends there, capture it all on film, and then have everybody walk up the mountain and uh, everyone pitch in to help us get the, the deer off the mountain back down to, to the trucks. I'm gonna have to live a long time to top that day. My son and I shot two really nice Nevada bucks. And as cool as that was, and as nice as those bucks were, we still had one tag in camp. My buddy Mike Spitzer has decided that he's gonna hold out to the bitter end. Oh, Randy, there he is. Huh? He's coming out. He's coming out right up there. Mm -hmm. Holy cow, Mike. Randy, that's a good buck. 